So how many times are you going to see a slide that says the big five? I know, a few more. But the point of this lecture is what happens to one of these groups if you try to put another group onto benzene? So if you have a bromine already on and you try to add a nitro, for instance, does that nitro go here or here or there? Does it go everywhere? Do you get mixtures of everything? If you have a sulfonic acid already on and you try to put a carbon group on, well, that doesn't really work. Let's use another example. If you have a sulfonic acid on and you try to put a bromine on, does it go here? Does it go there? Does it go there? Does it go everywhere? I don't know. That's what today's about. It's about multiply substituted benzenes. So we'll start with naming a couple of things. Yeah, these are um, singly substituted benzenes right here. I know. But these are multiply substituted benzenes as are those. These things down here, BHT and BHA, I want to point out that those are food additives, common food additives. Preservatives is what they may call them because they're free radical scavengers. So a radical source from something, it could be sunlight did some damage to our skin and created radicals, or it could be something we ate created radicals, I don't know, radicals from some sort of source. Abstract the hydrogen from this phenol I'm pointing, you can't see. From this phenol hydrogen, phenol functional group, leaving you with a radical phenol, a radical oxygen. Why is that radical oxygen so stable? Well, you can delocalize those electrons all throughout that ring. It's got a bunch of resonance. So BHT, BHA, food additives, also known as free radical scavengers, also known as antioxidants. How do we name these multiply substituted benzenes? Simple compounds are named as benzene derivatives, like bromobenzene, like nitrobenzene. Mm -hmm, we've said that already. Di substituted, if there are two functional groups on benzene, you must specify the position of them. So here are some examples. These are right next door to each other, and the right next door to each other word is ortho. So this thing can be called Ortho bromo nitro benzene because you're doing an alphabetical order. That could be a little italic O, or it could be the full word ortho. Or you could say one bromo two nitro benzene. Either way. This one would be meta, little italicized M right there. Meta nitro bromo benzene. Meta nitro bromo benzene. One bromo three nitro benzene. And this last one is para, or a little P bromo nitro benzene para bromo nitro benzene one bromo four nitro benzene. Mm -hmm. That's when you have two substituents. You can call it ortho meta or para. But if you have two, if you have more than two substituents, you have to use numbers. You must use numbers. Must. Um. Yeah. A couple little things down here. We've talked about a phenyl before. A phenyl is any time you have a group with a benzene hanging off, and that is named as a side chain thing. A benzol is a CH2 benzene hanging off. So this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's a nonane down here. It would be a 4-phenyl and a 5-benzol. So actually, that should be reversed because alphabetical 5-benzol, 4-phenyl, nonane is the official name of that guy down there. Okay. A couple that have common names, hydroquinone, yeah, maybe you've heard a bit about it in the media lately, and xylene. What's the deal with this little methyl coming out of the middle of the ring? What that means is it does not specify whether this is, oh, frozen. It doesn't specify whether this is this xylene or this xylene or this xylene, those are all three xylene. It's just that the top is orthoxylene, the middle is metaxylene, and the bottom is paraxylene. This little thing coming out of the center just tells you xylene is representative of any benzene that has two methyls on it. Yeah. When you name benzene derivatives that have a high priority functional group, just like when you name normal alkanes, that high priority functional group takes over the root name of the compound. What do I mean? Alcohol was a high priority function group back in our alkane nomenclature days. That those kinds of things would become an all, like a hexanol instead of a hexane. Mm -hmm. So this 
is root named phenol because that's the functional group that has the highest priority functional group. Yep, mm -hmm. I said that. It's a 2,6-dichloro because that high priority has to be on carbon number one. Yeah? Okay. 2,6-dichlorophenol. Amines are also high priority, and we named this guy, the common name aniline, the root name aniline. So then you have to talk about everything connected to aniline. This is carbon number one. Give the substituents the lowest number possible. Five bromo, two isopropyl, in in dimethyl. Put all that together, and you get five bromo, two isopropyl, in in dimethyl aniline. Um, could you have named this isopropyl something different? Yes, you could have named it two, one methyl ethyl. In N. That just gets sandwiched in in between those two vertical lines if you want to name it an, a methyl ethyl instead of an isopropyl. Whatever. The last one down here does not have a high priority functional group. If you look back at that old, old, old notes, alcohols and amines are higher priority than other things that we've talked about. But ethers, this is an ether, and alkyl halides do not take over root names. They are not high priority IUPAC functional groups. So this is just named as a benzene derivative and you give the substituents the lowest number possible. And that's gonna be, sorry, one, two, three, four. That's the lowest numbers these can possibly get. So this becomes four bromo, one chloro, two methoxy benzene, all because of alphabetization and give them everybody the lowest number possible. Okay. On to reactions of benzene. What we said was this video is really all about we've got a group on benzene. What happens when I try to put another group on benzene? Does that group go ortho? Does that group go meta? Does that group go para? Does it do all three? Does it do more than one? What's the deal, yo? Okay. So we said we could make ortho nitro toluene, meta nitro toluene or para-nitro-toluene. Turns out, these are the observed percentages when you make this thing. What? Mm -hmm. Apparently, ortho is the major, and para is also obtained in appreciable amounts, and meta, not so much. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, of course, it's all about the resonance. Resonance to the rescue. So electrophilic aromatic substitution has three main parts, three main steps. The first step is always make an electrophile. It's been a minute, but you remember that, right? Make an electrophile. Protonate the oxygen, one of the oxygens of nitric acid, and specifically you protonate the oxygen that already has a hydrogen so that you can make water. Fold it down, kick it out, make a nitronium ion. Nitronium ion. Nitronium ion is the electrophile in nitration, electrophilic aromatic substitution nitration mechanism. Mm -hmm. So then the rule is use benzene's pi electrons to attack said electrophile. Okay. If I take this pi bond to attack that nitronium, what I can choose to do is put nitro in the ortho position because I'm wanting to show how nitro bromo, <laughs> ortho nitro toluene is created. So this guy, since I used the pi bond there, I would get the positive charge in the other corner where that pi bond was. And here's my other pi bonds. This is a Wayland. And all Waylands have resonance, so I resonate. I'm going to draw these um, resonance arrows in different colors, not because it's required, but just because I think it helps us see things a little more clearly. 
in, o, o, blur, metal. Yup. And then I resonate some more. Oop. Forgot to change my colors. I'm going to have to erase in a moment. But. Mm hmm. This Wayland has three resonances. Is any resonance structure any more stable than any other in this Wayland? Yes. Uh huh. There is a more stable Wayland. We're going to not point out which one it is yet. But, uh-huh, there is a more stable Wayland resonance. There is one that contributes more to the hybrid than any other. And then finally, some base in solution comes to take a hydrogen from the carbon where you added the new group. That's super important, from the carbon where you added the new group. Okay, this is ortho. But before we discuss details about which Wayland is more stable, let's move on and draw meta. So, um, Frida Crafts, <laughs> electrophilic aromatic substitution. You always have to show the mechanism of making the electrophile. But since I just showed that, I'm going to go ahead and assume the electrophile has been shown. Yeah, because it has. This time I'm trying to make meta nitro toluene. So I choose a pi bond that's involved in the meta bond in the meta carbon with the meta carbon. Meh, I'll get it right eventually. And the plus charge goes on the other side. And this is a Wayland and all Waylands have resonance. So I flip it on around and draw resonance of my Wayland. All Waylands have at least three resonances. This Wayland only has three resonances. Well, only three that we'll discuss. I'll get back to that. Is any more stable than any other? Mm, to be determined, some base, somewhere, comes to pick up the hydrogen, dump in electrons, let me get this guy. And you guessed it. Before we continue our discussion of ortho and meta, let's draw para. Once again, I'm going to start with my electrophile because I've already shown how it was made once. So now it's just attack said electrophile. Use benzene's pi electrons to attack said electrophile. There's only one pi bond that involves the para carbon. So I gotta make sure that I choose to use that one. There's my positive, that's my Wayland. All Waylands have resonance. Mm hmm This Wayland has three resonances. And then some base in solution comes to take a hydrogen, pluck a hydrogen from the carbon where you just added the new group. And ta-da, here's para nitro toluene. Okay, this was para. Now let's go back and do our discussion of ortho versus meta versus para. We already saw that ortho was the major, so we have to be able to decide why ortho is the major. It always has to do with the resonance. In all these electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions, when you're asked why something goes where it does, it's almost always about resonance. I did say always earlier. It's almost always about resonance. So, yeah. We said one of these Waylands is more stable than the other. Who that? Which resonance is the bestest? Resonance number one, resonance number two, or resonance number three? And why is that resonance the bestest? 
the number one rule of resonance stuff is octet. Does everybody have an octet in any of these Waylands? No. The number two rule is negative on most electronegative. Mm, that's not legit either. Not here. Mm -mm. We always want to minimize formal charges, period. But I never really write a number three rule because different things you consider different things. But this one is about stability of the carbocation that is in the resonances. This first one, structure number one, is a secondary carbocation. The structure number two is a secondary carbocation. Structure number three is a tertiary carbocation. Whoop, whoop. Mm -hmm. What that means is structure number three contributes most to the hybrid. It's the winner, winner, chicken dinner. Contributes most to the hybrid. So what? Hold that thought. In meta, is any of these structures any better than any other? Mm -mm. It's a secondary carbocation. It's a secondary carbocation. It's a secondary carbocation. Any idea why we might create more meta? Mm -mm. Why we might create more ortho than we did meta? Hmm. I think it has to do with carbocation stability. So in the ortho, we had a tertiary carbocation as one of the things of our Wayland, one of the resonances of our Wayland. In meta, not so much. That one little tertiary carbocation makes the ortho Wayland resonance much more stable than the meta Wayland resonance, which leads to the ortho product forming and the meta product not really forming. We're going to pretend that 3% doesn't exist. We're never going to predict that this product, that this reaction should make meta, actually. Okay, on to the para. This one's a secondary carbocation, and this one's a mm, tertiary carbocation, and this one's a secondary carbocation. This one is the bestest. That one contributes most to the hybrid. That one is the winner, winner, chicken dinner. Mm -hmm. So, take home message. When you nitrate toluene, you end up creating ortho and para nitrotoluene. You do not create in our terminology, you do not create any metanitrotoluene. We saw that the actual percentage was 3%. We can't pretend that don't exist. So we make ortho and para. It's a mixture. We'll talk about whether you know, how you know whether ortho or meta is favorite. Mm -mm. Dang it. We'll talk about how you know whether ortho or para is favored when we see some more reactions. Take home message. You ready for it? What we should start to get in the habit of is look at the group that is on the benzene and ask yourself, self, is that an electron donating group or an electron withdrawing group? We're going to say this is an electron donating group. Hmm. Because it's an electron donating group, that means it's an activator. I know you don't know what that means yet. Hold on. Because it's an activator, that means it's an ortho para director. What? Uh-huh. It does mean that. We'll explain and refine that definition as we move along. But what it means in the long run is blue circle group activator. So, therefore, when you add this stuff, whatever this stuff is, it's going to go here. Sometimes, a word of caution, students get confused and they start thinking that this is the dictator, that the reagents are telling you where stuff goes. Uh-uh. The blue circle thing is the dictator. It says, the stuff that gets added to me has to go where I say it's going to go. We'll see more. Okay. So I used a few words a minute ago that said donor, activator, withdrawer. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Anytime you have an electron donating group, if you follow that blue trace, what that means is, down in the valley over there where my laser is going to be eventually, down in the valley over here, you're going to have, oh, man, it's not showing up at all. Okay. Down in that valley over there where that blue circle is, that Wayland is the Wayland when there's an electron donating group attached to the ring because that Wayland is always going to have a positive resonates right next door, right adjacent to 
where you've added the new group. There should be pi bonds over here, but I'm just going to make some little dashes just because. We'll see. An electron withdrawing group makes Waylands that are less stable. That's because you're going to have an EWG connected, and when there's a um, positive right next to that EWG, that's not great at all. So electron withdrawing substituents make Waylands less stable than benzene. Electron donating substituents make Waylands more stable than benzene. Because of that, the reactions are faster and slower accordingly. This red trace is the activation energy of a benzene that needs to add a withdrawer, a benzene with a withdrawer that needs to add a new group. This blue trace is the activation energy of a reaction that has a donor that needs to add a new group. Ugh. So what I'm saying is EA red is bigger than EA blue. And when EA is bigger, the reaction is slower. Huh. When the reaction is slower, we say that benzene is deactivated. When the reaction is faster, we say that benzene is activated. So donors activate benzene, withdrawers deactivate benzene. Yeah? Okay. We're going to go through another example. But again, I can't decide if I should split the video here and make a new video of more examples, but... We'll see. When you nitrate anisole, as I'm sure you can imagine, you could get three potential products. Ortho nitro anisole, meta nitro anisole, para nitro anisole. We're going to have to see which one is the major product. I probably shouldn't, but I'm going to skip the formation of electrophile steps. I feel like I skip it a lot when I talk about this aromatic stuff, so you guys tend to forget it when you have to draw these aromatic mechanisms, but please don't do that. Please don't forget. If I start out with ortho, I'm going to use a pi bond involved in the ortho carbon, and I'm going to attack. Use benzene pi electrons to attack said electrophile. The nitro gets added. Oh, and actually I just remembered something I didn't talk about previously. I'm going backwards. Sorry. Back here in all of these Waylands, did you notice that I kept the nitro the way that it was in all of my Waylands? Whatever I started out with, I kept it that way. Could we have technically drawn six Waylands instead of three Waylands? Yes, where we flip-flop the double single bond of that nitro, but we're talking about the stability of the Wayland itself, the stability of the benzene, this nitro over here, resonance of this simply gives me extra Wayland structures, but that would happen in ortho and meta and para. So it doesn't really help me prove the point. Remember, we're to the point now where we're drawing resonance to prove points, even though we drew a lot of Wayland resonance in the beginning of this stuff where we weren't proving points. We're at the point now where we're drawing re resonance to prove points. So this is the point that we wanted to prove, and flipping that nitro doesn't give me anything special. Okay, back to where we were. Sorry. Note, I'm going to keep this nitro the way it is the whole time, and I'm going to draw my ortho resonance. And if you so desire, and you should desire, you can pause the video and try to draw these on your own. It's a lot easier to watch me draw a bunch of resonance than you having to draw them on your own. But you're going to have to draw a lot of them on your own. There's my ortho resonance. And actually, I'm going to skip the green step also where some base in solution comes to pick up the hydrogen. Yeah. I'm going to skip that because really we discovered that this is all about the um, resonance of the Wayland. So I'm derailing from my color scheme we used in the last few videos, and I'm attacking using the meta position to give me this Wayland.
I'm really not saving myself enough space over here. But I want it all on one slide so we can talk about it more easily. I'm going to skip the sum base part as well. So, yeah, I guess we better draw med. I'm Tara also. I said I'm going to skip the green part, but I'm going to make this green because we don't have a lot of other great color options. The para. I really hope you're drawing these because the only way to get better as resident at resonance is to draw them again and again and again and practice. But can you just watch this video and watch me draw stuff? Sure. Are you going to take a little nap while you do it because you're bored out of your mind because your hand's not moving? Probably. Okay, there's my para resonance. Ortho compared to meta compared to para. Well, I drew three um, Wayland resonances in each of them. If I go through and analyze, this is a secondary carbon, carbocation, secondary carbocation, secondary carbocation, uh oh, secondary carbocation. Secondary carbocation, secondary carbocation, rut row. If I went through para, it's secondary, secondary, secondary. What's the deal? Well, I tricked you. There's an extra resonance structure somewhere. Where's the extra resonance structure? Is it in the ortho, the meta, the para? Where's the extra resonance? So we've got a lone pair that is benzylic. That benzylic lone pair can donate when that positive is right next door. That benzylic lone pair can donate to help out that positive, like so. And we get these things. These things, I'm going to give them numbers. Who's the winner, winner, chicken dinner? Which resonance structure is best? Is there any better that's any better? Is there any resonance that's any better than any other? Uh-huh. Which one's best? Number two is the best. Why is number two the best? Because everybody has an octet. Mm-hmm. This oxygen is positively charged, but it's positively charged because it's sharing more than it would prefer. It's not positively charged because it has less than an octet. Every atom in molecule in resonance structure number two has a full octet. Can we draw a resonance structure like that in the meta? Nope, because there's never a positive directly connected to an atom with a lone pair in the meta. Mm -mm. Nope. In the para, can we draw that kind of resonance? Yeah. Because there is a structure where the positive is directly connected to the atom that has a lone pair. And this blue structure up here is the winner, winner, chicken dinner. It contributes most to the hybrid. Uh-huh. So that's nitration of anisole. If we nitrated anisole, we would expect orthopara products. Because we should... Start looking at that blue circled group and say, hmm, is that blue circle group a donor or a withdrawer? That blue circled group is an electron donating group. And electron donors are activators. So this will be an ortho para director. Again, what that means to be a director is the new stuff that you're going to add this blue circle thing dictates where it goes, and it dictates that it goes to the ortho and para positions. That does not mean that we get two groups added. It means we get one product where the nitro went ortho and one product where the nitro went para. We don't get any doubled 
doubly nitroed compounds. So we will talk about those kinds of things later. I don't get that guy. Okay. I think it's time for another take home message. When we nitrated toluene, we made ortho and para. When we nitrated anisole, we made ortho and para. Which one nitrates faster? Anisole nitrates faster than toluene. Why? Why does anisole nitrate faster than toluene? Because anisole had extra resonance where everybody had a full octet. Mm -hmm. That is a better resonance circumstance than just having a tertiary carbocation. Toluene has a tertiary carbocation in its wayland, making ortho and para more stable than meta. Anisole has an extra resonance picture. First of all, extra resonance pictures makes you more stable, period. But an extra resonance picture that was excellent, fantabulous, because it had everybody without tit. So anisole brominates, nitrates, sulfonates, free of crafts, alkylates, acylates faster than toluene. Any electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction happens faster on anisole than toluene. Okay. There are going to be four situations that you find yourself in to know whether something should be an activator, deactivator, donor, withdrawer, all that stuff. If you have a lone pair, uh, let me actually state that in the benzylic position, in the benzylic spot, if you have a lone pair, that's going to mean you're an electron donating group. Anisole has a benzylic lone pair. It was that benzylic lone pair that gave us the extra resonance picture in ortho and para. If you have what I'm going to call a plain carbon, like toluene had a plain carbon. Toluene had just a CH3 connected to a benzene. Why do I say plain carbon? It will make more sense as we continue. But if you have a lone pair in the benzylic spot, that's an electron donating group. If you have a plain carbon, that's an electron donating group. Those two things both donate, but they donate differently. Why did that lone pair help donate? It donated by resonance. That gave us the extra resonance picture, the super magical, awesome, full octet resonance picture. The plain carbon donated by giving us a tertiary carbocation. The chemistry way to say that is, a tertiary carbocation is more stable than a secondary carbocation because of hyperconjugation. So hyperconjugation is what made toluene donor. Resonance is what made anisole donor. Resonance is a stronger effect than hyperconjugation. That's why anisole brominates faster than toluene because they had different donation abilities. Whew, I think that's almost enough for this video. The last thing I want to say is, hmm, this is nitration of biphenyl. Your job before the next time we meet is to draw, mm, let's just say meta and para because we maybe have picked up by now that ortho and para always come together. We should draw meta and para resonance Waylands of these guys and figure out whether it's an ortho, meta, or para director. Oh, I said that's enough for this video, and of course, anytime I say that, I stick my foot in my mouth. Going back here, do we expect to get more ortho or more para? Mm, do I want to say it here? Sure, I'll say it here. I'm going to predict that para is my major product here. I'm writing that with a highlighter accidentally. Um, I'm going to predict para is my major product here. I want you to also predict that para is the major product here. There's a whole section in your textbook about whether ortho, meta, or whether when you have ortho, para, whether ortho or para should be dominant. The reality is as this group, this blue circle group, gets bigger and bigger, it gets more crowded for you to squeeze a new group right beside that group. But there are two ortho positions. So statistically, it's more likely that the ortho position will react because it's a two to one ratio ortho to para, statistically. But as this group gets bigger and bigger, sterics start to be a problem where the ortho positions are crowded and the para positions are much more vacant. 
So if you go back to toluene, CH3 is a lot smaller than OCH3, so the actual observed ratio of toluene was more ortho. But we're going to make a summary, make a statement that's a little bit too simplified to say when something is ortho para mixture, we're going to predict that para is the major most of the time. Sure, statistics does play a part. That's why toluene had those percentages. But we're going to say para is the major most of the time because sterics has a big impact on things. Okay, this is really the end. My only friend, the end. Do this guy. <laughs>